Hello, and welcome to PDX Garden Home. It's the end of September, and you might think that means it's the end of planting, but we're actually potting up a lot of um, perennials for next year. And so we've got some in the yard that we're gonna dig up and bring into the greenhouse. And then we also have um, some, uh, what they call plugs and liners, which we've purchased for next year that we're potting up into bigger pots to then overwinter in the greenhouse and be ready to put out for a nice show in the spring and into the summer of next year. So there's still a lot going on here. And to facilitate that, we use a lot of potting soil. So um, we use so much potting soil that buying it in the bags doesn't really make sense for us. So we have it delivered uh, by the yard. And then what we do is um, fill, up these, fill up these bins, which I get from Costco, these black and yellow bins and uh, put them in and around the greenhouse uh, to use for later. So that's what I'm up to. I will uh, see you guys all in the next segments. In this episode, we're gonna be planting cauliflower starts from plugs that I grew from seed and cell trays. Then we're gonna be harvesting this year's winter squash. We don't have the big harvest, but what we do looks pretty good. Finally, I'm gonna show you how we thin carrots after they've grown a bit. They're actually a little bit overgrown, but we're gonna go ahead and thin them anyway. All right, well, let's get started. Well, uh, it's toward the end of September and I have some cauliflower starts that I planted in back in July, um, late July, and they've been in the greenhouse. It's been a little bit humid in there, so I'm not sure <laughs> uh, it doesn't, the leaves are not looking great on there. So I'm hoping they'll be okay once I plant them out here. Um, I definitely don't want to try to grow them to fruition in the greenhouse. I want to, I've tried that before and it I had limited success on that. So I'm going to be planting them in here in this bed. This is where the winter squash and some melons and stuff were that are, that'll be out here very quickly. Um, and then, yeah, um, we'll see, we'll see how much they can grow before the season's over here. It may be that they just grow enough to overwinter and then we get hard looking at cauliflowers in the spring. Um, I don't know if they'll really grow enough to give us a cauliflower before uh, say in the November, but uh, yeah, we'll see. We'll keep you posted on it. So I'm just going to start right in here. Actually, I was going to use my knife to plant, but I'm actually going to use, I like these these little tools. I got some of these on Amazon. They're easy to like dig down into the cell trays and then I can easily kind of dig a, uh, a spot for the, for the roots in the ground there. So, get at it here. Uh, these plants are small now, but cauliflower plants actually grow quite large. Um, this is a basil, eggplant basil, so those will all be out by the time this gets large. Um, so there's our roots there. Definitely, this is probably a little bit past due, ready to come out of the cell tray with that kind of root system in there. And I'm just going to push it down in there, put the dirt around it, and hope it does well. But this thing will get, it'll kind of cover this whole area here, so I'm going to give it a good, I don't know, at least a foot before I put another one in. Got a weed hiding out there. But since this squash is in my way, and I, I don't I'm, I don't need to be particular in my spacing with this fall planting here, so I'm just gonna plant the next one all the way down here. Teeny little butternut there, a weed here. There we go. Okay, tuck one right here. Make a little space for it there. I like when I do this, I like to squeeze the bottom of the cell tray like that to loosen it up, make it easy to pull out. I can pull it out. So I didn't have to dig it out. Sometimes I use this to dig them out if I need to, but usually if the roots are, if there's that much root in there, they'll come out pretty easily. I usually have to dig it out if the roots aren't fully developed yet, which is kind of what you want. Okay, moving over. here. Just leveling this out a bit. Squeeze. Pull by the leaf. All right. I'm a little bit afraid putting these out here 
I was mentioning I don't want to grow them in the greenhouse. The only reason I even thought about that was that because we've been having the white fly problems, I was thinking, well, maybe I <clears throat> don't want these out here where they're going to get hit by the white fly because they most certainly will. And I might be able to deal with it with some hand-to-hand -hand combat if I watch it. There's not that many of these here, so if I just pay attention to it. Plus, we're entering the cooler season, so I don't know that yet. The white fly might kind of die down when it's cooler outside. A lot of bugs are like that. They don't, they don't actually do all that much when it's cooler. Slugs. Slugs like it cooler, so we'll definitely have to put some more slug bait out, but... Okay. Well, I'm running... I ran out of room on this side here. I'm gonna... I think maybe what I'll do is I'm just gonna flip over to this bed here and put some along here. This is where our quinoa was this year. I've already cut the tops off. I need to... We can come along and just cut these to the ground now, but I, I just haven't had the time to do that on my own. One in the corner there. I'm just eyeballing the spacing here. These guys are just little mushrooms that are popping up in the kind of compost we have. They don't hurt anything. And they kind of indicate the soil is pretty good. Okay. Well, that's it. That's planting out the cauliflower. We'll uh, check back on these later in later episodes. We'll show you how they're doing, and we'll maybe show you kind of our efforts to combat the white fly with them as well as we go. I'll see you guys in the next segment. Well, winter squash this year was... Um, a bit dismal. We had a better year last year with winter squash and uh, I'm going to do some planning to get a better year next year. Uh, this was our kabocha squash area here and um, this is an example of the of the size we got. This was about average size of the little kabocha squashes we got. There were about a dozen of them hanging up here. Um, well, so I mean, first thing is, you know, why were they, these should be at least twice this size, maybe three or four times the size. And, you know, why were they so small? Um, I also had beans planted in here and corn. Um, and just generally all of my winter squash, my beans, my corn just didn't perform very well. And here in Portland, we did have kind of a weird summer. We had really hot days a few times, but we didn't have sustained heat for very long. And so, um, this stuff is heat loving stuff. So that could have partly to do with it. But I also think maybe with having the winter squash and the corn and the beans on the same bed, which is what they call the three sisters method, I may have not fertilized enough. I used an all purpose fertilizer, organ all purpose organic fertilizer at the beginning of season, but I, maybe I should have had more fertilizer. And then I think with the really hot days, the beds got dried out and then maybe didn't get watered right away soon enough. And so I think not keeping everything well watered over here might have also contributed to it. So I'm gonna tackle all those issues in next year's garden to try to improve our improve our corn, beans, and winter squash areas. Um, but the, the funny thing I was gonna tell you about this is that um, the squirrels have been treating these things like nuts. And so there were about a dozen of these hanging up on this, hanging up on this trellis. And I came in one day and I saw this trellis just shaking like crazy from over the other part of the garden. I thought, oh, what's going on over there? And as I walked closer, I saw squirrels run away. And I realized the squirrels were kind of crawling up on it and getting into things. And I saw that uh, just a, a few of these were gone at that point. And then later in the garden, I was just walking around and I was finding little little holes and, and I was finding these things with bites out of them and things, but they were like tucked away in little holes in different parts of the garden around. So the squirrels apparently were getting up in here and uh, taking them and then hiding them in different places, uh, kind of like they would with other forms of food this time of year. Um, and uh, yeah, at this point, I didn't come out and harvest. So at this point, the squirrels got them all. So they're all, I saved a couple off this thing. Um, which is how I have this one, but other than that, the squirrel, the squirrels got everything here. So, yeah, I'm not too worried about it because it wasn't really the it, the crop wasn't what I wanted it to be anyway. So that's fine. Let the squirrels have their fun on that one. Well, what I'm going to be doing now is over on this bed here, uh, harvesting what we did get. So um, the squirrels don't seem to go after the yellow zucchini, uh, the yellow um, spaghetti squash. So these squashes are called small wonder. 
and they're a, a type of uh, yellow, they're a type of yellow uh, spaghetti squash. Um, so they're not the, the, the bigger, longer spaghetti squash that you normally see. I'm gonna go ahead and get them though, because I don't know if the squirrels will leave them alone forever. So I'm gonna go ahead and take them out. You know, they technically, they're still green on the stem on some of this here, so it technically probably should wait a little longer, but I think it'll be okay. Um, they'll cure off the vine and, and probably be fine. Some of them down below here are totally ready. And then of course our big pumpkin, which you've seen in prior videos, this actually is totally ready. So I, I should rescue it from here before something else gets it. And then what you'll see as I'm working along here is that we also have butternut squash. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna take all of that. I'm gonna get the butternut squash and the, and the spaghetti squash and, and the big pumpkin here. So I'm gonna work along here um, and I may have to flip around and hit the other side of it as I go. And I'm just gonna put my harvest over there in the, the the red, uh, my little red uh, wheelbarrow. Yeah, that guy's too small to be anything. I mean, that'll be more, more trouble than it's worth. But this is about the right size for these small wonder squashes. And this guy's still a little bit green, but he's almost falling off the vine. So I'll go ahead and take it. Well, this is a big one, yeah. Yeah, that's ironic that I've had trouble with my other squashes and some of these spaghetti squashes or the way they're called, the small wonder spaghetti squashes are bigger than I might expect. This is a little bit bigger than, than average for this kind, I think. Um, this is about the right size right here. Wipe, whoop, <laughs> let the mud off there. All right. I think the squirrels looking around, I didn't, the corn really just didn't come out. It was, it was really stunted and small. So I gave up and didn't actually harvest it, just left it here. It looks like my corn stalks are kind of beaten up and the corn is gone. So I think the squirrels actually came out and took out the corn too. So, you know, more power to them. Cause I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna eat the little stunted corns anyway. I really love butternut squash. So, glad we have some of these. I'm, I said I was gonna take everything, but some of these are, this guy here is just way too young, way too green. Um, you know, it may not survive anyway, but I'm not going to take it because what's the point? It's not, it's for sure not ready. All right, I'm going to take my wheelbarrow around to the other side here. Let's see what I can get there. Yeah, there must be something about this yellow color that just turns off the squirrels or something because they went after the green kabocha squashes and left these guys un, undone. This one's perfectly ready. It already kind of fell off the vine, so... The thing with winter squashes is after you harvest, you're supposed to leave them, let them sit for, let them sit for a week or two as well. They usually have to cure to develop the sugars and things to be actually tasty to eat. Uh, so you're not supposed to harvest your winter squash and then just eat them right away, in other words. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get this big guy here. You can hear the, all the crows in the background, but you might hear, I've been hearing this last week, a bird of prey above us every once in a while. Well, let out its, I'm not sure what kind it is, but all right. Well, this is probably our best uh, Halloween pumpkin specimen in the entire garden. It was a volunteer. As you all saw, I had strung it up over my netting and let it kind of grow vertically. And now it's good. We're into September. This hopefully will not rot out before Halloween time. We can carve it up and have a good Halloween pumpkin. All right, well, that's all the damage I'm gonna do over here. So I will see you all in the next segment.
Well, I brought you all to my carrot bed. I've got a little bit of carrots here. They were planted in July. I actually planted them in cell trays in the greenhouse. And then when they got big enough, I planted them in big clumps out here. And in doing that, there's multiple carrots kind of all together. And so they need to be thinned. And actually I'm past due thinning. So um, they, I may have already stunted some carrots by having them grow too close, but we'll see what we can do here. And I'll show you kind of what I'm, what I'm up to. So, <sighs> As you kind of look in here, you can kind of see uh, some of the carrots here. There we go. So you can see here, so I've got three. This was planted all in one clump here, right? And so at very least, I'm going to pull one of these out of the way. I'm going to pull the one in the middle here. And that teeny little baby carrot, I'm not going to try to save it, though. Just throw it there. And now these, now I'm going to pull one more here out of the way. And now I've got two that are reasonably spaced. Same thing over here. I've got kind of four carrots all kind of right next to each other. So I'm gonna pull two out of the middle, leave the two on the ends to grow on. And that's the task. Uh, some, I've ne I don't think, and I, I wouldn't say for sure because I don't know that I would recognize it if I did, but I don't think I've had the carrot fly. There's a carrot fly that creates a maggot that gets down into the carrots and gets into your crop. And I don't think I've had that before, but I bring that up because what I've heard some people say is that if you are kind of thinning carrots out like this late in the late in their growth, you're basically introducing pests, the carrot fly more into the ground or something into the ones that remain. Um, so I don't know if I'm repeating that correctly or not, but, but I don't think I have that particular pest problem anyway. Got lots of all kinds of other pests. We've got brassicas just get decimated and my chard and beet leaves get decimated, but carrots don't really, my carrots fork because I don't put them in right or they don't have the best soil condition sometimes, but I haven't noticed any particular carrot, any uh, particular carrot. Yeah, these are, I've got a bunch that are really close together here. And I had in this bed previously this huge fennel plant for over a year that I let go to seed. So I'm now perpetually pulling out little fennel starts. But they're not, they're, you know, you could say, well, why not you just let them grow to fennel? But they, when they grow, they don't look like regular fennel. They, they kind of smell like fennel, but they look like some kind of weird cross thing. And I think it's because the seeds might have been some hybrid or something or other to begin with. The original plant that is i mean this is all right here the volunteer this is all volunteer fennel here just gonna pull that out i just don't i don't want it to have it in here anymore but fennel and carrots are in the same family so it can be confusing growing carrots in here at the same time that's the other problem of waiting too long to thin out my carrots is that they're... I run the risk when I pull out the carrots that I want to thin of pulling out the ones I want to keep too because they're just so close and in there now. All right, well, we move down here. We'll see some carrots we can actually harvest while we're here. That's some of the carrots that were here for a lot of the summer actually. It's a nice, nice good carrot there. Another good one. And another fennel. This is a purple carrot. Wish it was bigger, but it's been in the ground all summer, so the fact that it's not bigger is suggesting that it's not it's just not doing well. No reason to keep it in there at this point. All right. Well, that's it for now. I'll see you guys in the next in the next segment. One of the other 
tasks that we go through this time of year is cleaning off all of our um, pots and trays and everything from uh, the growing season in the spring through the summer. Um, I use a lot of these little, what they call plug, plug cell trays. Um, you can get these in sheets that are um, what they call uh, 1020s. Um, so big sheets of them where they're all connected, but I actually like them when they're just in, they're disconnected and they're just in these six things because I may not want to do a full sheet of one kind of thing. And then I may want to mix and match kind of where they ultimately get placed while they're growing. Maybe I plant a bunch of seedlings and then some of them need more sun or some need less, some need more water, some need less. And so I can pull them out and, and uh, move them individually to different spaces, plant them individually. So uh, our process for kind of cleaning off our pots, whether it's this, or even if we're doing like a one gallon pot or whatever, um, is we just fill a tub with some water, we throw some a little bit of bleach in there, and that's to kill any kind of microorganisms or um, bugs or things that might be hiding in these things that I don't see just by spraying them off. And <clears throat> spraying each one individually would be too time consuming, so I don't necessarily do that. It just depends if they've got a lot of gunk in there, I might spray them out, but otherwise, I throw them in here individually and if I feel like I need to spray it, I just spray it and then throw it in there and that's it. That's the process and once we get all of these kind of in there, then I will uh, empty them out onto a drying area. I'll put them on a shelf where they can dry and then when, once they're all dry, um, put them back in the potting shed for storage until we need them again. And, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk in the gardening community about using less plastic and, you know, I, I get that. And, you know, they, these things, I tend to use them over and over again. So these things will last me for several years, um, if not more. Um, I, you know, I tend to, I tend to save them for a long time. So even if they get like a tear on one end and one of the cells doesn't work, but the other five cells does work, I still, I still end up saving them. So I've had a lot of these things for more than several years. I've had some of these for like eight years now. Um, yeah. So that's, uh, that's the chore that I'm on to, but, uh, I'm not going to make you all sit here and and wait through that, I'll kind of close up this, this week's video and say again, thank you for watching. And if you enjoy, if you enjoy these videos, um, please tell your friends and family about it and hit that subscribe button below and uh, let's keep building this community. All right, that's it. And I will see you guys all later. Take care, bye now.